Vinny Tortorich here. Hey, man, if you're a fan of Vizzy, you might be a fan of me, too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com, and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. Replay Guitar Exchange is your premier independent guitar store. Being independent is good. With all of the major brands, including new, vintage, and pre-owned, you can find the guitar, bass, amp, or accessory you are dreaming of. From vintage to the newest models, Replay Guitar Exchange can help you find that perfect piece. They have industry veteran expert staff, all players like you, down to the owner. You aren't just getting a great guitar, you're getting the replay difference. Find them online at replayguitar.com and find your dream guitar today. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level with their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo, t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads from the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to another fucking podcast. You kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima, hula hoops, and Pac-Man video games, don't you see people today have attention spans that can only be measured in nanoseconds? See, son, all legends never die. They just lose weight. It's like a legend and an out of wood from with a lot of light. Party time. Yes, it is party time. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. And hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you and it's always good to be seen. Izzy Presley right here holy shit do i got echo going on if i turn that down i don't but then i have to turn it up when they talk so it'll be all good well deal with it it is another fucking podcast a very special friday afternoon edition uh make sure you hit up all of that social media at real lizzie presley twitter instagram and facebook and of course another effing podcast on the facebook for the show Uh, Make sure you click and like and uh, follow on Spreaker, subscribe on iTunes, tell your friends, because I need you guys to support the show that way, because it's all about you, and if you want to support the show monetarily, you absolutely can. Izzy Presley at Yahoo.com is your PayPal. This shit is not free, and uh, I do it for free, but you guys know that we've been through this whole goddamn damn thing hey next thursday night if you are in los angeles come on down to the grafton hotel bar 20 we're doing this amazing new show called punchlines and backlines it is a comedy and music show we have six comics like craig gas and uh, earl skakel and uh, four more great comics and we have jason christopher from prong as the featured musician who will be doing his first stand-up set ever and doing an acoustic set being joined by a bunch of friends so that will be a lot of fun so check that out it's called punchlines and backlines it is free expecting a big big crowd so get down there early there is no cover 8 p.m at the grafton bar 20 and uh becky schmidt checking in already good to see a bex Glad you are here, and uh, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from Motley Inc., Mr. Joe Lester and Timmy Craven. What's up, Izzy? How we doing, guys? How you doing, brother? How are you? Dude, I'm great. I'm glad you guys uh, were able to make it down. Yeah. Uh, your first uh, first post-Motley uh, movie interview. Rather, this is, yeah, this is the first one. That's and cool. uh, if you guys don't know this, uh, Timmy did a lot of the, the live vocals um, in the movie. Um Fucking Timmy, this is your first time here. Why don't you uh, kind of tell us who you are, where you're from, and uh, give us a little backstory. Then we'll we'll dive into the movie a little bit. Uh, yeah, Timmy, singer for Motley Inc. Um, been doing this for a while. Uh, grew up with Motley Crue, and you know, rocking out. Big '80s rock fan. So uh, got hooked up with the right guys, and here I am. 
And your first time at the Rainbow was on Monday night? First night, yeah. Rain- Rainbow Monday night with uh, Fred Corey from uh, Cinderella. Love Fred. So he uh, gave me the official tour, had dinner, and it was a good time. And uh, Joe, how long have you guys been doing this together for the, yeah, the yeah, whole we've run? Yeah, been do- doing the band for, I think, like seven years, eight years now. Okay. Yeah. 2011 crazy. was our first show. Damn, damn. Yeah. Um, how has uh, business increased since that last uh, Motley show? Since uh, since since oh, Motley since, since the it, last Motley it show, it hasn't changed too much. It's been oh, really? it's been steady since we started the band. It's not um, crazy enough where it's the only band we do. We still do Atomic Punks, right, right, and a few of our other bands, stuff like that. But um, we're able to do probably about twenty five shows a year with the Motley band. So it's been good. A lot of times we do double shows with Motley Inc. and Atomic Punks at the same time. So those are fun shows. You get a uh, night of Van Halen and Motley Crue on okay. the same night. So I, I still think we got to get Ack tribute to Ace Frehley on one of those shows too. Man, that would be a good triple bill. <laughs> if the old House right. of Blues and Sunset was still here, that would happen. Right, yep. right. Yep. That would be fucking great. Yep. Um, so uh, thoughts on the movie? I loved it. I, we went. Timmy took me to the premiere with him on um, Monday night, and it was it was amazing. It was such a good vibe in the theater. Everyone was laughing and excited, and the. It's really cool to see the movie with the music cranked up loud like that. Right. Huge PA system in the theater. I, I really thought that added to it. You know. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's on Netflix. It makes you laugh. makes you cry. It's good flick. Yeah, good, good flick. flick. It was yeah. really, really good. And it's 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 a throwback. You know, I, We talked about it a few minutes ago, but I think like the newer people reviewing it, the millennials and stuff, aren't really going to get what that era was about. So. Right. It's um, it's fun for us that grew up in that era and you know had rock star dreams and all those you know things that went along with it to watch the movie and the recreation of the book and all that stuff. The book, I mean, I I'm not a really huge book reader, but I think I read through that whole book in two sittings just because I couldn't quit reading it. So it, it was cool to see it, you know, as much as they could come to life on the screen. Yeah, and the actors, actors did a yeah. great job. Yeah, Man. everybody involved in it, all the producers, directors, everything were really cool, down to earth, and. Everything was was perfect. They didn't really leave much out of it, you know. But it's right, right. Like we were talking about earlier, if they put everything in there, it'd be a you know six hour movie or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they could have done a triple. They could have done three two hour uh, movies <laughs> right? on Netflix and released all three of them. Yeah, yeah they could have the, the, had their the dirt budget series. probably wouldn't have handled it, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, it's like with, with the book. I always told people, it's like if you're gonna read this, do not take it in the shitter with you. Because three hours later, you will try to stand up and you'll fall over because your legs are dead because you can't stop reading yeah, this goddamn stop, thing. Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's funny. Like we were talking about, like the the people that weren't from that generation that they're not going to get it. It's like one of the headlines I saw: uh, horrible. This is a movie about horrible people in a horrible band that should have stayed in the eighties and all this shit. It's like, what, really? Do you, do you, they, they just don't get it. No, no they it, don't. It's like they don't understand that that was <laughs> that's how it was. Those yeah. people, most of those people doing the interviews were probably not even even alive in the point where you could drive down the Sunset Strip and see people on the sidewalk. Like yeah, you know, yeah. back in the days, what it used to be like. The, the people doing these interviews have probably never even seen what the strip was all about back then and stuff like that, or even had a, any inkling of of how people were. Party, right. flyering, hanging out, you know, talking about the shows, the new bands coming up, just everything. You know, everyone was so enamored with the scene and wanted to be a part of it, and it's just non-existent now. So what do they have to go off of, you know? Yeah, exactly. But you look at it, you know, 40 years later, and Motley Crue's still being talked about. You yeah. Know? yeah, exactly. That's when music was music. You know, it's now it's a lot of it's overproduced and stuff with the, you know, computers and stuff. Back then, they didn't have that. That was just the, that was the music. Mm-hmm. Right there, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I grew up in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And Minnesota, oh yeah, and it's like it was folklore because you saw you had the magazines, and you, so you saw all the pictures, but you didn't know what it was actually really like. And I graduated in ninety one, so I mean this is my wheelhouse. I mean, but I'm still a little bit younger, you know. I'm forty six, but it's like I'm still a little bit younger than you know than the people that actually experienced it. But right. it's like when you go back and you watch this, but you still you, you go back and you watch the documentaries, like well shit, even. Uh, uh, Decline of Western Civilization Part 2, The Metal yeah. Years. It's like you get a taste of it and you see what it was really fucking like. Yeah, high. totally, totally. And there's just an extension off of that. That was going on at the same time. You know, When I was a kid, I was growing up in high school. I was in Seattle. And I thought if you played the Troubadour or the Whiskey and you were in a band and you had a record deal that you drove Ferraris and like you were a right? millionaire and a rock, you know, the whole thing. And then you come down here and you go to the Troubadour or the Viper Room and you're like, 
this is it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? So, or like me, you know, my mom and family, you can't listen to that. That's the devil's music. You yeah. can't sneak in, going and buying, you know, the Motley Crue right. CDs and all the '80s stuff. And you know, it's where did you grow up, Timmy? I grew up here in Southern California. So. And you've never been to the fucking Rainbow I until Monday? I, I didn't even know what that. I've been past That's it, unbelievable. Passed it numerous times, but never really went into it. You that know, is I went so been funny. to the whiskey and, you know, Gazzari's, which is, you know, the key club now and stuff. And But never, you know, the Rainbow was just like, yeah, I know that's the place where the, every, all the magic and shenanigans happen. But, you know, it's, I don't know, at the, at the time, too, in the 80s, you know, I was still 10 years old. And so... I couldn't really get out. You know, Us Festival, my mom gave me grief. 83, I was 13 years old, wanting to go to the Us Festival to see Botley Crew. You know, and she's like, no, no, you can't go. It's too dangerous. And I guess somebody got trampled over. See, I told yeah, you so. Yep, you know, that's yep. how it worked. Yeah, we had uh, stories like that back home, too. It's like people in, uh, there was an ACDC concert at the Met Center. God rest its soul. And uh, somebody got stabbed in the parking lot. Mom's like, see, you can't go to these yeah. goddamn things. You know, and like, I remember when Motley and uh, Whitesnake came through on the girls tour. It's like, I wanted to go to that so bad. You know, it's like, no, you, uh-uh. you're too yeah. young. I saw that tour, Long Beach Arena. It was awesome. Nice. Yeah, it was a great show. And then when Tommy threw his drum through Tower Records there in West Covina by the mall there, you know, I was all set to go. And my mom found out I was going. And she was like, you're not going there. You're going to stay away from those guys. <laughs> yeah, so God damn. That's kind of funny. Jacobus checking in. Uh, you guys know Jacobus from yep. Jeff Jacobus. Yep. What's and up Becky going too on? In Minnesota. And, Hi, yeah, Becky. absolutely. What's going on, guys? Uh, let's talk about crew a little bit before we start diving into the movie. Um, do you remember your first time hearing crew and kind of were you hooked right away? Uh, me personally, yeah. I mean, I was in that age, you know, it's 81, 82, you know, I was in junior high and I, you know, I heard Motley and I thought, wow, this band's, you know, like a local band and they're, they're cool, you know, all this, this hype and everything else. And, uh, immediately I just started liking it. You know, I, I started listening and, and, uh, you know, getting their, their cassettes at the time, you know, listening to those and, for me, I was I was hooked immediately. It was the, it was something that we that kids in my air really needed. You know, something like forget the Duran Durans and all those other uh-huh. bands that were out there. You know, it's it's all about rock and roll. So, <laughs> yeah, mine was like uh, I think I think my introduction was through that USA Network show Night Flight. Remember that back back fucking day, a right I do. Videos, yeah, and they were real big on the metal videos back then. It was like almost all metal, whereas as MTV had some of the other videos mixed in. But I think I saw the Live Wire video right about the time that Shout of the Devil came out. And so I got the Shout of the Devil record. And I remember looking at the cover and looking at the photos and listening to the record like endlessly, like maybe seven or eight times in a row, just on vinyl, listening to that record. And that was Looks to Kill. That was my song. I loved, loved, loved that song. So that was that was like my first introduction to that band. Yeah, mine was, uh, mine was Shout. And um, I went to a Catholic school. I did too. And I was at uh, my neighbor Jamie Dukewitz, who I, who I went to uh, went to school with. He had it, and we were down there listening to it. And it's like you know, at that time, you know, it's like fucking Culture Club and Michael Jackson. Yeah, and totally. that, that's what the popular shit was, totally. especially being in a Catholic school. That's what everybody was listening to. They weren't fucking metal fans, you know. I mean, there were, but it's like the the that's what people fucking listen to. And all of a sudden, I heard that. It's like, whoa, dude. Yeah, this is fucking cool. We had our division. You were either a, wa- a new waiver or you were a metalhead. There yeah. was no crossover. There was no no one talked to each other on the other side. Vice versa. It was like you were either on this side wearing the jean jackets with the buttons all over them and the concert t shirts, or you were wearing you know pink sweaters and in your uh, collar up and loafers and stuff like that. Your, your wedgie haircut. Yeah, your wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> fucking wedge. Yeah, I mean it, ours was a uh, it was like a parochial private thing you know so it was like there was a lot of like rich kids there so it wasn't a lot of people that fucking dressed like that yeah you know yeah so mom had to try to dress me up and fit in and it was like it never worked yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um uh, damn it come on don't you uh, son of a bitch you need to set your screen not to go to sleep so quick. yeah i know but <laughs> fucking a what can you do um so it was shout Show, yeah. And then uh, where'd you go from there? I mean, from there, I was going to go see him on the Theater of Pain tour. It was going to be one of my first shows, and it snowed in Seattle that day. So I couldn't go to the concert. I was so bummed. I still have the untorn ticket stub. So, so bummed. It was at the Tacoma Dome. 
down south of Seattle, and that was that was after. But then I saw him on the girls' tour. I had moved down to uh, L.A. at that point and saw him open for White Snake. So that was pretty. Or uh, I'm sorry, they headline on White Snake open. Yeah, but, so they're um, girls. Yeah, yeah, killer, killer, killer show. What was your first show? My first Motley show. Jeez, I don't even remember. I mean, I've seen him at the you know, the forum and. But I, don't know, I guess that would be it, the forum show. Carnival of Sins or something like that? Or? No, it was before that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was the la- it was the final tour. The you know, final, the, yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. final tour. Stable Center, that was my first show. <laughs> the last show. <laughs> uh, mine was uh, Feel Good. Cool. Mine was Feel Good. And I'm always going to have this story, Joe. I can't remember if I told you this story last time you were on. But uh, my buddy that I went with, we were sitting in the upper level, and it was, it was crew and pussycat. And uh, there was a couple behind us making out. And lights went down. Fucking crews or actually, yeah, crew was just getting ready to come on, and then all of a sudden, my buddy kind of does this, and he pulls his, fi- he wipes the back of his neck, and he pulls his fingers apart, and there's like this thick line going in between his fingers. I don't know if it was beer foam or what. <laughs> he went to the bathroom. Uh, Bobber, Jeff Bauer, if you're listening, yes, this is the story. Wow. And uh, he came back. He missed the beginning of beginning of crew. And he never wore that fucking T-shirt again. Wow. <laughs> Bought wow. the T-shirt that night. And he never fucking wore it again. Um, so you said the band's been around, what, eight years? Eight years, yeah. We um, we were doing Atomic Punks. And uh, Timmy had been playing in another Motley Crue, local Motley Crue um, tribute band. And uh, kind of had a falling out. And we got word somehow that, that uh, it had happened. And the drummer, Scott, and Atomic Punks called me. and was like, hey, what do you think about doing a Motley Crue tribute? And adding it to our, you know, the different bands that we do. And uh, he's like, you got to check out this singer guy. He's unbelievable. So he sent me some YouTube links, and I listened to him, and I was like, sold. It's like, we got to play with him. He's just too good. So that's kind of how the band came together. Timmy, when uh, when did you start singing? Uh, probably when I was five years old. Okay. Um, so growing up, I had an aunt who's in the music business, and the grandparents paid for her for all the vocal lessons and stuff, and... So she was, I lived with my grandparents growing up. So she was kind of like my older sister. So she was like, oh, you need to start singing. And so I'd, I'd had all the lead plays or all the lead uh, parts in all the uh, Christmas plays and stuff growing up and, you know, singing parts and everything else. And she pretty much taught me how to use my range and warm up my voice, how to take care of my voice, things like that. And then, you know, once I got old enough, uh, you know, like high school started little bands and and then after high school started bigger bands and you know we did original bands for a while and you know that thing pay to play thing you know wasn't that enticing so uh-huh so then the whole uh, tribute scene you know everybody wants to be like the atomic punks you know oh, atomic yeah. punks did it no. i mean i remember seeing we these didn't guys do it. <laughs> i remember seeing these guys before i was even in a tribute band and you know the the punks were were it you know you had if you were in a tribute band you had to be as as good as the punks or better so um that's that's it. So I've been singing most of my life. Were you always able to emulate, um, like doing the cover band stuff? Were you able to emulate the the people you the bands that you were doing, or was it? Um, were, did did you put your own flair on it? Um, basically, the only like tribute bands and stuff that I've done are the Motley stuff. Okay, and um, you know, being close to the area where they grew up, you know, and everything else, and you know, being friends with Vince Neil's son, it just. That was just the band that I always listened to, and I could always sing like that. But if you tell me to do, like, hey, sing this Guns N' Roses song, well, you know, I can only maybe do one or two Guns N' Roses songs, but I can't right. sing that all night long. But, but you should hear him do Slaughter and Skid Row. Oh, yeah. Kills it. <laughs> next, time, next time on the Mon- Monsters of Rock Cruise and you're doing karaoke, we're getting Timmy drunk, and he's going to sing some Slaughter for you. You, nice. you won't believe it. Dude, well, that's just not easy, man. He's got that high voice. It, it, you won't believe it. There was a funny little story. We did a show in, uh, was it Alabama? Yeah. And we did a show. We played two hours there, and afterwards we decided, hey, we're going to go to a bar. And this guy is doing karaoke, and they're getting ready to close. And I'm like, hey, uh, can I just sing a song? I've never done karaoke before. He says, okay, but you got to you know, make it quick. And I go, okay, well, I've never done this before, but I want to do uh, Skid Row um, 18 in the Life. And he's like, yeah, right, okay, whatever. <laughs> so we do the uh, – starts it, and the whole, the whole bar just stops. Eyes, you yeah, know, jaws yeah, dropping, yeah, yeah. eyes wide open, and I mean, it's—I think it's on YouTube somewhere. It's kind of funny, yeah, but we blew that bar away. It was, it was funny. We were drinking, and all of a sudden, he gets up and starts doing. And I didn't know—I only know him doing Motley. I've never heard uh-huh. him do anything else. 
he starts doing Skid Row, and we're just like, what? And we're like, you can do Skid Row too? Unbelievable, man. But it makes sense. Are you able to do the talking voices too? Or just the singing? Yeah, just pretty much the singing. I mean, what's my Vince Neil was, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty damn close. <laughs> but no, no. I mean, I'm not, I'm not Vince Neil. You know, I'm a, no, no, I know. I'm a big fan of Motley Crue, just like you know, all of us are big fans of Motley Crue. And you know, I just, just you know, grew up in that era, and just it's something that brings me back to my childhood and a lot of people's childhoods. And you know, like people when we go play a show, the Motley Inc. show, you got people there like. Everybody's coming up telling their Motley Crue stories. Hey, I live be in Vegas behind Vince Neil, and yeah, hey, totally. this I went to high school with them, and I remember going to those rock candy backyard parties and stuff. You know, so it's it's funny how everybody shares their Motley stories, and it's so it's, it's cool to be part of the you know Motley family. So. Right, right. Did uh, how did you become friends with Vince's son? Um, it was with my other Motley Crue tribute band, and he came to a show. Or actually, I he, went to one of his shows. I'd say he was doing a Motley Crue because yeah, they opened up for Atomic Punks. Yeah, time. he had a band called Rock and Roll Junkies, and it yeah. was a Motley Crue tribute. And um, it was in Santa Ana. And uh, Neil sees these guys with long hair, you know, wigs on and stuff, and he thought it was us. So he goes, hey, there's those guys. And so I walked up, you know, walked over to him. Hey, I'm, I'm Timmy. I'm, I'm the, the singer guy. And he says, really? We need to talk afterwards. And we talked and just hit it off and, you know... <sighs> I, I don't know. It's the whole, the whole, uh, like, I mean, Neil was at the house all the time. We'd barbecue. He'd come over. His mom would come over. You know, Tammy, great, great people. And, you know, we just hit it off like brothers, you know. So. And uh, Vince is, uh, so you, were you saying Vince has jammed with you guys before? Or was it? No, he played with the Ponks. Played with the like Ponks. Like in 96 or 97 at the Shark Club in Vegas. He showed up one night. We were playing there. And uh, he got up and did Panama, and he did he did two songs. He did Panama and something else. And it was funny because, you know, a lot of people will say he sounds kind of like Bob Dylan, kind of mumbling <laughs> yeah, just a little yeah. bit sometimes. And he was drinking that night, and it was, you know, mid-'90s. But it was almost, when we were playing, I was thinking to myself, this is almost like Bob Dylan singing Van Halen. It was, it was pretty awesome. So we got to hang out with him that night and stuff. And that's actually, like, the, Howard Stern plays Atomic Punk's uh, this little excerpt he did where he was talking about the band and stuff and where it was awesome that he did that but the show that he plays on his radio show was from that shark club that oh, night wow. in, uh, in Vegas and that was the night that, that Vince showed up and sang with us I might even have it recorded somewhere I'm, I'd have to try and pull it out and find it but yeah it's pretty pretty crazy instead of singing running with the devil he wanted to sing shout out the devil yeah <laughs> uh, uh, Scotty shout checking in from uh, Canada hello from northern Canada uh, knows everyone Okay, very well. Uh, Greg said, uh, loved every loved every minute of it. I'm assuming he's talking about the movie. And Becky says, uh, first time I saw my link was at the main event in Minnesota, friendly Minnesota, totally blown away. When the hell are you guys coming back? Let's do another tribute show together. I miss you guys so much. Oh, Becky. Cool, that, thank that, you. Yeah, that'd be, I'm, we miss Becky too. It's, you know, it, people ask the question, why don't you guys go here? Why don't you guys go there? And it's the same answer all the time. It just takes a promoter or a venue exactly. or somebody that you know wants to pay the money that'll get us out there and play the show and and um you know it's not super cheap so it's not easy nope. to do as nope. well so um unfortunately just right now there's really no place in in the minneapolis area that for us to go play so you know eventually hopefully we'll get there maybe moon dance jam again even though oh, that's, there a, you that's yeah, a little there ways you away but we did a show there that was that was really really great moon dance has always been really really friendly to all of us so yeah there's more stories on that one too yeah we played with heart and night oh, yeah, ranger oh wow uh, he's got a great <laughs> oh please please <laughs> okay so we played you know we're we're the only tribute band there so we're you know night ranger goes on they get off the stage and and uh, they go into the you know, the, it was kind of like a, a locker room setting. So they're in the showers and stuff. And I figured, you know, I got to take a shower. The girls from Hart have their buses outside. So I'm just going to go sneak in the girls' bathroom and take my shower. <laughs> I'm taking a shower. All of a sudden, the door opens up. And here walks Ann Wilson. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm taking a shower. Oh, that's okay. How do I wait outside? <laughs> Nicest person oh, dude, ever. That's she awesome. Was, you know, they went on stage. And we stood there right next to them, right on the side of the stage, and watched the whole entire show. And she was just... I mean, for who she is in the music business, she was just very, very down to earth and just like, you know, it was it was an awesome time. Even the guys at Night Ranger. I mean, oh, yeah. oh were, dude, were great. you you grow up listening to those guys and here you're sharing, you know, dressing rooms right next door. And you're like, dude, you got these guys that are right next to us. This is awesome. So, yeah, Brad Gillis was as nice as yeah. it gets. And it's funny, we not even thinking about it, we had been listening to Speak of the Devil on our drive up 
to, oh, to wow. the show. Not even, not, not even because Brad yeah, was yeah. going to be there. And then we saw him. So we had all these questions about Speak of the Devil, and he was just telling us stories about you know how it came together and how they recorded it that day and what happened. It was really, really cool. But how many people get to say that they had Ann Wilson walk in on them when they were in the show? <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, the, that's the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Scotty says, uh, read it proper. It said, how's everyone? Oh, okay, very well. well I'm good. You guys good? Yeah, we're good. All right, Excellent. Good. Dude, Thanks, Timmy, Scotty. Timmy's part of Motley Crue history. He's, uh, you know, what do you, who gets to do that, too? Et- yeah, exactly. the Motley Crue history I was watching books. that and then hearing his vocals on some of those songs, just going like, oh, my God, like he's a part of this movie and mm-hmm. you know, no one can take that away it's, yeah we're, we're gonna get in the movie yeah. after the uh after the break um which will be coming up in just a just a few minutes here i guess my only moon dance story i was working with hairball at the time and uh sammy hagar was playing that night <laughs> and uh we're like sitting in their green room which is right next to sammy's green room and we were like we're listening to sammy warm up it's like jesus fuck fuck yeah yeah yeah, Sammy's a good guitar player. Oh, he's great. And he was super cool, super accommodating. He's like, fucking just took pictures with everybody. He was great. He's like, aren't you the guy that got kicked out of here? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Funny, yes. funny uh, question about hairball. Was that Paul Stanley video where the guy's hair goes up in flames that was all over Facebook? Was that hairball? That was hairball. Yeah, I thought was, it was. It's yeah. not. I knew it wasn't Paul Stanley, but I was like, yeah, yeah. I think that's hairball. Yeah, that was Bobby uh, Bobby crazy. Jensen from crazy, Hairball. Crazy, if you guys crazy. aren't familiar, I'm sure everybody's seen the video. But uh, Hairball was doing a show, and the very first um, first set that they, the first part of the show is Paul or Bobby comes out as either Gene or Paul, full makeup, yada yada yada, doing Detroit Rock City, and uh, the cannon went off behind him, and his fucking hair fucking went up. A spark hit him. Spark hit him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, oh, awesome. dude. And um, he didn't miss a beat. Yeah, you know. Well, I'm sure he didn't even know he his hair's know. on fire. No, he texts behind him putting out the hair. His fire <laughs> completely going up in flames in the back back there. Well, I've heard Gene talk about that when that happened to him back in the day. He's like, I didn't know. I had no idea my hair was on fire. Mm. You know? Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no thanks. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a short little break. Uh, throw a couple ads at you. Before we hit those ads, please hit up BeaterAmplification.com. You. Guitar playing bastards, hit them up. Two E's, B E E T E R. One hundred watts of testicular fortitude. Three channels a year. Old school Metallica tone. Old school ACDC tone, and that old school clean ass Fender tone in the same hand wired tube driven head. They are fucking awesome. Pull two tubes, and you got yourself a fifty. They are amazing. They are beater amplification. That's two E's, B E E T E R amplification.com we'll be right back with more with joe and timmy of motley inc it is another fucking podcast retro arcade brings minnesota and surrounding areas arcade games from the days gone by all of those great games from pizza joints and arcades are available in cocktail units and custom machines dozens of favorites from your youth in one machine to complete your game room or man cave retro arcade also sells and services your favorite pinball machines find them at facebook.com slash 80 arcade that's facebook.com slash 80 arcade Retro Arcade. Your youth is just one click away. RockstarLeatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out rockstarleatherworks.com. If you need to promote your band or business or just want to stylize, personalize, or customize your ride, check out vid-decals.com. Want to create and customize your own stickers representing your band or make your own bumper sticker? Vid Decals can do it. All stickers are printed on quality vinyl and can be placed on any flat surface. Stickers are an affordable way to promote your band or business. Go to vid-decals.com to get started. That's vid-decals.com. Vid-decals.com. Hey, ladies. Sass Pants Designs will take that rock shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsdesigns.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook for special offers and custom orders. That's sasspantsdesigns.com, sasspantsdesigns.com. Sass Pants will make you the envy of the party. 
Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Arnold. I like uh, fat women and cocaine. And you're listening to Izzy Presley here on another uh, fucking podcast. And uh, I know Izzy uh, from Cocaine Anonymous meetings. I've actually uh, seen him at the meetings with uh, uh, Ace Havad Johnson from, uh, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but Ace has got a bad coke problem. And uh, his sponsor is uh, is uh, Josh Todd from, and again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is a sponsor for Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And, uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles. The, uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call your sponsor. Fucking A. <laughs> it just never gets old. It just doesn't. Hey, uh, we are back. If you guys have any questions uh, for uh, Joe and Timmy here from Motley Inc., please jump in to the uh, please jump into the chat room and you can ask them live on the air. Um, and also, before you do that, please go check out A&P Productions Laser Engraving Division. That's APLasers.com. Uh, these guys are so good, they can even, even laser engrave a fucking hot dog bun. These guys are fucking great. APLasers.com. Mother's Day is coming up, and uh, Father's Day is coming up. Uh, get something special for that mama, mommy or daddy. You got time to do it. APLasers.com. And if you need anything designed, uh, a website, uh, a band logo, uh, T-shirts, anything, hit up John Palumbo Design. We love us some John Palumbo here over at Another Effing Podcast. Great dude, talented motherfucker, and uh, super great guy. John Palumbo Design. We love him. So check that out. All right. We are back with the guys from Motley Inc., Joe Lester, and Timmy Craven. And uh, let's uh, let's dive into the movie. Um, so, now, Timmy, how did you – you did a lot of the vocals, the live vocals in the movie, um, like the, uh, the the backyard party and uh, the, tr- uh, the tryout and – Starwood. Starwood and the forum. Right. Correct? Right. How, how did you get involved with that? Uh, actually, Joe called me and said, hey, the uh, producers uh, from uh, the, the Dirt movie are going to be giving me a call and want to know if I was interested in doing the doing the movie. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, let's have them call me. You know, I didn't think anything of it until, you know, I got a call from uh, Chris Swanson. He calls me up and says, hey, we just want to know if you're interested in doing this. And Chris Swanson's a great guy, by the way. And um, But... Uh, so we got talking to that to him and setting things up, and then you know, throwing out what songs we were going to do because I guess the, the one of the songs I did was the um, "My Kind of Lover," the Billy Squire song. But they, I guess Vince did other songs when he was in his Rock Candy band that they couldn't get really rights to. So you know, from uh, from that, they uh, put me in touch with uh, the record producer Howard Benson, and uh, we got to talking and. And I really didn't know how to sing this song. I've never heard Vince sing it, so I, you know, my wife tells me just sing it. Uh, so you just put your own little yeah. Vince swagger on. She it. says, on the Billy Squire song." Yeah, yeah she yeah. says, just, "Just sing it the way that you sing it." And I'm like, okay, because I was looking at YouTube and trying to find how different people sang the song, how Billy Squire did the song. I'm thinking, okay, how would Vince Neil sing the song? So we just we did it, and it was. I mean, Howard kept coming into the sound booth, making sure I'm just making sure Vince isn't in here, you know. <laughs> and I guess when Ni- when Nikki uh, heard about the you know the Billy Squire song, he th- thought that you know from what I was told that he hated the song. But then after I did it, he's like, "Yeah, I love that song now." So, so that's just word from you know Howard what he told me. But and well, Phil, Phil X played guitar and bass on the tracks. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah, so I didn't know cool. that. Yeah, Phil's a good buddy. That was cool that he he was. He's like Howard's guy for go to for recording and stuff. So it was cool that he's to see his name with Timmy's name on the, yeah. the song. Taking too. time off of Bon Jovi and yeah. his his projects, <laughs> yeah, his yeah, drills exactly. band and everything. So now, didn't you say that uh, Joe? Weren't you saying that um, uh, Ralph from uh, from uh, Steel Panther? Yeah, the whole, the whole thing actually that? started. Um, I was out on tour with Steel Panther. We were actually in Norway for a show, and it was in the afternoon. And I went back. I was going into my into. The, like a production room and uh, Michael Starr was sitting in the hallway on a phone conversation and it was weird that he was, you know, out in the hallway. So I knew it was probably something serious where he didn't, you know. So it turns out he was talking to the producers of, of the movie or whoever was contacting him about the movie and he thought they were contacting him to um, help teach the Vince Neil guy how to move on stage like a 80s rock star singer. Yeah, yeah. And it turned out they called him and they were asking him about singing on some of the tracks and he was like you know well damn he was like you know I'm I gotta be honest with you guys I would love to do it but I'm not the guy like but I know the guy 
and he plays in a band with with uh, with our tour manager, and I can put you in touch with him. So next thing you know, I'm on emails, sent them. They're like, send us some uh, YouTube things, anything that you have that so we can hear Timmy's voice. And um, I sent him a couple of things. They flipped out. And next thing you know, they're contacting him, and he's in the studio recording the songs. So, awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, amazing uh, thank you to Michael Starr from Steel Panther. Thank you, yeah. Michael. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Who, uh, who's, who's owed me an interview for about three years now. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll have to work on getting him in here for that. Yeah, I know. I, I, I text him like once a year and annoy him and remind him. <laughs> it's like, and if he if he responds, it's like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> we'll, well make they're, it they're, happen. They're recording though. a new record, so maybe that'll be a time for promo. Uh, they'll there be, you they'll go. be in promo mode. So. There you go. Uh, Julie checking in. Uh, Joe saw you at Moondance and in Cleveland Steel Panther. You are a fantastic musician. Just watch the dirt. Very um enlightening. <laughs> there Especially you go. the opening scene. Yeah. First two minutes yeah. are great. <laughs> Don't T- watch the movie with your kids, people. Yeah, yeah. no shit. Uh, Kelly checking in. Hi, Timmy. Uh, how long have you been singing? Uh, fifth grade. Was it? Or five years old? Five yeah, years since old. I was five years old. Since I was five years Almost old. like first grade, uh, the Christmas plays and stuff growing yeah. up. Kelly, you're going to have to go back and listen to the beginning of the show. Hear that whole story. His voice, too. It's not a uh, soft vocal. It's like twice as loud as anybody I've ever heard sing. There, there's times when he goes up and hits the high notes in my ears. <laughs> my head is just cringing in the in ears because that high vocal is so piercing and so strong. It's just like, whoa. See, uh, another reason I don't use in ears. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's a volume knob. Yeah, there. I know. And, I know. And when you play with them long enough, you know when those big screams are coming. Yeah. So you can just kind Turn of down. anticipate it. Turn down. Thanks for the question, though, Kelly. Uh, Jacoba's checking in. Uh, off the subject, but you're an amazing photographer, Joe. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, a lot of people. Anything that you're passionate about, I feel you will be good at because you put in the time and effort to to excel at something. So, but I appreciate whenever people say that a lot. Oh, uh, uh, Kelly Wilson. Uh, I know Timmy. I just wanted to say hi. Oh. Hi, Kelly. Well, I appreciate you checking in, Kelly. I'm glad you're uh, glad you're listening. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so you, you're involved with the flick. Uh, you you go to let's talk about the experience of the uh, of the premiere. Uh, I, I've never been able to go to a freaking hollywood premiere you know uh kind of talk about that i mean seeing it there uh well for me it was you know my first time i mean we didn't do the red carpet thing um my wife and i just kind of snuck in you know we get there and you know hiing you know telling everybody hi and you know shaking hands and hugging and kissing and stuff like that and um you know nikki walks right in front of us his wife Courtney, very nice lady, comes in. Hi, I'm Courtney. You know, just everything was just really cool about that experience. Um, go ahead and grab your popcorn. Go find your seats. They had tables with sodas and everything. Go sit down. Um, sitting down, uh, Howard Benson, the the record producer, uh, was sitting a couple rows behind us. He said, "Timmy, come here. I want to introduce you to some people." So he's introducing me to people, and I'm running back and forth. Kind of felt sorry for my wife, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's part of the deal, right? You got to network in this city. Yeah, exactly. If you don't network, you're not going to make it. That's just the way it goes. So, if you can get around and say say hey to people and like, yeah, it was it was um, that was my first premiere too. And funny thing about the premiere, I actually heard Eddie Trunk, Trunk talking about this is that that is the only time that any we're a select group that actually yeah. saw that movie in a theater, right? Right. And on a big, huge, and I didn't, I didn't even really think about that at the time, unless they do select showing somewhere else. But I don't know, you know, if they will. But that's pretty awesome that we're on top of it being our first premiere it was a one night only exclusive seeing that movie in a theater like that and just to see there's i mean there's lines (laughs) hundreds of people outside just hoping for a cancellation to get in and and uh you know i was talking to howard and he was there by himself and he he told me he goes yeah there's two people that sat next to him that just must have the people that had those seats didn't show up so they put those tickets up and these were actual Motley fans sitting there, so it's it was kind of nice for the select few that got to sit in there and yeah. see everything. And you know, you turn around and you know Vince Neil sitting behind us, and you know all Taylor the, Hawkins is right next to us. Yeah, all the the guys, Machine Gun Kelly's up on top in the top row and stuff, and it was just it was a good time. You know, I thought he did a fantastic he, job. Awesome. He my God. crushed it. He was awesome. un- I mean, there's so many mannerisms that he did, and I was like, oh my god, that's so Tommy. He just, he was unbelievable. Kudos to him, man. Yeah, and from what I heard, too, he spent time with Tommy. You know, Tommy yeah. Tommy and Nikki were on the set most of the time, and he got to uh, hang out, and, you know, he had those drumsticks in his hands for months, trying to learn that's to funny. twirl them and everything else. That's awesome. 
So well, yeah, I, all those guys did a great job. I was just and the thing that I loved about because I mean I fucking hate rap. But it's like you didn't even think for one minute that this guy's this fucking rapper. It's like this is fucking young Tommy Lee. Yeah, it was crazy. You know? Yeah. Did, did no? Did was there a lot of people there that knew that you did the vocals in the movie? And did you get people coming up to you saying, "Dude, that was fucking awesome"? And well, it was that? just. I mean, the cast because when I watched the movie in December, it was with the cast okay. and the cast and crew pretty much, and people there. I sat up in the back, you know, just the quiet guy and people are coming up you timmy you know chris nielsen one of the uh he's part of the management he manages motley Crue. he comes up you're timmy you did a great job and you know all even the cast i mean daniel weber the guy that played uh vince you know he's hey man thank you for making us sound good and you know uh, douglas booth nikki six all those guys were just great you know just thank you for doing this thank you you know so but at the premiere Pretty much the only people that knew who I was were the people that were involved in the movie. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, we're sitting next to people. They had no clue who I was, you know, except for my buddy Joe here, my wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, like the unsung vocal guy. Like, there's the same thing with the Queen movie, too. Most people don't know um, the guy that did all the Freddie Mercury stuff. I think his name is Mark, Mark something. And he is just unbelievable recreating the Freddie Mercury voice. It's scary how dead on he is. So it's like someone said, it's like 5% Rami, 10% old queen footage and the rest is this guy mark i forget his last name it's on you can find him on youtube really easy right right well that's uh you know saying i don't know how much i think there some of the other tunes were just motley crew tunes that were in the movie where they had re-recorded them but all the re-recorded stuff is is him that's pretty killer yeah what'd you guys think of the uh the lake of virgin cover that's interesting I was teasing with him. I go, doesn't sound like Vince. <laughs> yeah. I was like, did you do that? Is there something you're not telling us, man? <laughs> yeah, there's some a little behind the scenes stuff that was taking place. And Joe's all, hey, did they uh, pay you to keep quiet? Because that's you. Yeah. And so when like, we're in the theater, I'm singing a little bit of the, the Like a Virgin song, the way Vince sang it. And it's, it's like, that's you. I'm like, no, it's right, not. You did it. You and did then it. My <laughs> wife's looking at me, did you sing that song? Yeah. No, no, baby, I didn't sing that song. <laughs> So funny. Uh, Scotty checking in from Canada. I wasn't on the 2012 MORC, but I see Modley Inc. was. How was that experience for you, and would you do that again? It was awesome. Uh, in a minute. We did, it, we did it a couple times. We did it um, one year with the normal group of the four of us, right. and we played, um, I think we just did a small lounge both times we played. And then the second year, I don't know if it was 13 or I think it was 14 was the next time we were on there. And uh, our drummer couldn't fly, so he couldn't come out and do the show. So we actually had Fred Corey from Cinderella do the whole Motley Inc. show with us. And it was great because Motley is one of Fred's all-time favorite bands. Yeah. So he was so cool to do the show with us, and and, uh, we sat down with him. It didn't really do a full rehearsal. Just me and the guitar player, Lance, sat down with him and went through like some of the endings and how we were going to do the songs. And then he... uh, he showed up and did it in a great moment in one of the lounge sets that we did with Fred. Um, we're, we're playing, I think it was in the second song or something, and John Karabi comes running on stage <laughs> from the side with a big, huge towel, and he's toweling off Fred's forehead <laughs> of sweat like he's uh, Fred's drum tech. And it, just the fact that it was Karabi, yeah, you know, with yeah, the whole yeah, Motley yeah. Crew connection yeah. and stuff, it was pretty, That's it was fucking pretty awesome. Great. Did you yeah. notice that the dude that played Karabi looked like Brent Woods? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get it. I was kind of like, man, they could have got a guy that looked a little bit more like John. Right. That, but the guy looked nothing like him. But I like the Ozzy scene, but that uh, guy didn't look like Ozzy either. So well, was, I mean, how many was, people look like Ozzy? Yeah. But it was it was really well done. I thought it, I thought it was great. Oh, laugh, I was laugh, pissing laugh, myself yeah, during that. That was fucking hard. great. And that was the thing. It's like uh, we were talking about before. People don't realize that that debauchery was real. You know, that was that's the fucking real deal. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Nikki dying and coming back. Right. People don't... If if it wasn't a true story, people would say, oh, yeah, that's a bunch of BS. You know, that that really didn't happen. But these yeah, guys yeah. lived it. You know, there's they're still here to talk about it. So... Well, somebody I know from the cruises says that his buddy that he grew up with was the was the guy, was the EMT that shot him. Oh, shot wow. him up. Wow, yeah. Crazy. And uh, he's been trying to get him on the show, but he's like... I guess he doesn't like to talk about it, or yeah, it he would have to do it like uh, inconspicuous, like or, right, right, right. But Can't give up details or something. Yeah, exactly. Also, t- uh, Timmy, I was going to ask Timmy when when you saw the um, the preview of the movie, was that the final version, or did they go in and do a few more cuts? 
I think I when I saw it, it was pretty much the final version. Yeah. But every time I see it, I notice something new. You know, at, at first I was like, oh, I wish they would have used more of my vocals. But then I go and see the movie, and I'm like, wait a second, they used the whole entire song. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You just, you're so focused in the movie, watching the movie, and all these little bits and pieces go past you. And it just, you know, you don't, as you watch it more and more, you pick out more things. So it was, I think it was pretty much the final cut when I saw it in December. But There's a cool article, too, that Howard Benson did. I, I don't know if it ran on RollingStone.com. <laughs> It was some big online uh, thing picked it up, an uh, uh, interview he had done. And um, he's the producer that did the recordings that Timmy and Phil X played on. Mm-hmm. But he had co- said uh, with the movie that they had found their secret weapon. And their secret weapon was, was Timmy singing on those songs. I, that's pretty cool too, man. Yeah, and that I could crush you in half because I'm so big. And just- <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. Somebody, uh, somebody texted me. He was like, dude, you're famous. I'm like, oh, God, now what? What did I do? But it was my tweet from last night. If Spin put their article up and they had a bunch of like fan tweets and they had my tweet, but it was the tweet. That, remember what I posted last night and it said the Motley, uh, the Motley Lumber Company. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Whatever that. you tag. And there, there it is. That's so there funny. it is in the fucking tweet on I was fucking like, man, we might Spin. have to change the name of the band. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, now call it the Tommy Lee Lumber Company. Yeah, that would, that would make sense. Yeah, that's your, that's your clothing, that your underwear line right there. Drift, drift. Whip. There you go. That you know, I'm watching that and the the blowjob scene at the Rainbow, and all I could think is like, there's no way this is possible because when Tommy got head at the at the Rainbow, he was still at the whiskey. Interesting. Get it? Big cock joke. See. <laughs> Come on, I'm proud of that one. <laughs> one of the scenes I, I was kind of bummed they left out though is. Uh, the when when Mick tr- like walked into the ocean to try to kill himself, and they didn't put this in the movie. And this is what I, don't, I don't in, remember that. Oh, Mick yeah. is in Mick's chapter in the book, and uh, he's like, oh, "Nobody fucking gives a shit about me, so I'm just he, I'm going to kill myself." And he walks into the ocean. He's hammered, of course. And this is at the same time that the car accident happens. So when he he thinks he's dead, and he comes walking back up on the beach. And he sees everybody in the fucking in the house, and they're all just sad and depressed. Oh, he's like, God. "Oh my God, these all these people are sad about me being dead." And he thinks he's a ghost. Oh no! So he tries to walk through this pane glass window and just boom, <laughs> and broke his fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. like, "Oh my God, I can't believe they didn't fucking have yeah, that." I don't in remember there. that. That's a good yeah, story. There's there's all kinds of Motley stories, like we talked about. I mean, if they yeah, put yeah, all yeah. that in there, it would be a whole Motley the Dirt series. Yeah. You know, so it's. Six hour movie. Uh, Amber says uh, the Aussie dude did a good job, though. Uh, without a doubt, the most memorable scene to her. All right. Very yeah, well. he was he was great. I like that whole pool scene. <laughs> uh, the drinks are on me. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Really? Is there shit that is there shit that was left out that kind of bumped you guys out? I, I was surprised they didn't do any Pamela Anderson stuff, but she might have had to have signed off on something to have them talk about her her likeness or whatever so maybe that's why that didn't happen but i was surprised about that I remember the book was written in you know, what 2001 so i mean there was a few yeah. things in the book where it talked about pamela yeah. towards the end of the book but yeah yeah but i don't know if, they didn't and, and they didn't really address him going to jail so maybe that wasn't part of the yeah the that's season, true so. but you know they can only fit so much in there yeah story, exactly so exactly but that's a key of the movie you're supposed to be entertained right it's not like it's like a here's an, an exact recreation of the fa- it's not a factual documentary it's exactly a, a and that's what i try book, to tell you know? it's like well fucking doc did he said he managed kiss but he didn't manage kiss until after yeah. miles like oh dude just get yeah. over it dude yeah, right. hey but nikki's writing a new book right now so we don't know what that's gonna yeah, be yeah you never know what's in that i love the scene too when they're in the hotel and the and the two guys come running in and Doc turns around and goes, you know, what the hell are you guys doing now? And then Tommy Lee comes running through <laughs> naked <his> naked speedo <laughs> with the with the and then and then when he shoots the whatever he did, he threw he threw the bottle at the at the picture and it shatters the picture and he falls on the ground and he jumps against that old couple's door and falls down again and runs. I was just I was cracking. I thought that was uh, great. Dude, that yeah, was you guys great. listening, you need to see that movie if you yeah. haven't already watched yeah. it on yeah. Netflix. And uh, I thought the dude that played Nicky was. I mean, there was times where it's like when he's talking, he's like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, his talking voice. He had great. him fucking down because he he spent time with Nikki as well. He yeah. spent a lot of time right. with Nikki, you know. So he got all that everything down. I yeah, thought it was his style great. of recreating his voice was like pretty. The it was pretty crazy, dead on. And he's British, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, most of those guys did talk with accents when I was talking to him and stuff. But it's and from what I hear too, he's very gullible. I mean, he's the nicest guy. He never, you know, he's very humble. He never think that he was a, an actor or whatever. But he's, he's a really good dude. 
So. Well, and then uh, if you guys don't know this, I mean, the whole fucking movie was shot in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, Louisiana. and they they fucking recreated everything. Yeah, I think did cool. they do like some kind of interior stuff with the rainbow though? Or I don't know. I, I think, think it was I think they all recreated it down there. Jesus yeah, Christ! Pretty cool. Yeah, we, we do a show in uh, New Orleans once a year, and uh, the guy that puts it on is um, one of the big time sportscasters there in, in town, and. He's like, hey, I was an extra in the in the Motley movie, oh, a, yeah, a yeah. concert scene, and and uh, they were doing the Shout at the Devil song. And I go, so how did I sound? He goes, yeah, I had a feeling that was you. It sounded like you. And <laughs> so it was. This was what in June when yeah, we were we were there summer. last last yeah. summer, and there they were already talking about it because that was a big deal for that whole town. You know, it's a, a lot of the the people in the town got to be you know extras in the concert scenes. Yeah, stuff. what were you trying to recreate Vince's live sound? When you were doing it, or were you trying to stick close to the record? I mean, what was your approach to the approach to the Volks on that? Well, when we did some of the stuff, um, some of the songs, they we did them, and they said, "No, that sounds too clean. It sounds like a record. We need it to sound like, you know, like a like a concert." So I did my my first uh, version of it, and then we went back and did the song maybe two or three more times and roughed it up a little bit more. You know, yeah, yeah. Howard kept saying, "Okay, now add a little bit more to it." You know, so I'd, you know, we do a little bit of "Hey" and all that, you know. Woo stuff, you know, and, and we got a little bit grungier and grungier throughout the different uh, versions we did, and I think they just did a combination of mixing them all together and just to give that that live that live sound. Did you go back and like watch some of those like old old performances to try to get a feel for the for the for the way Vince was live to make it more authentic? Though? <sighs> Not really, because I mean I grew up with Motley, so it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. I mean I've heard a lot of their past shows and watched a lot of the stuff, and I just thought no that's just let's make it our version let's make it you know i don't know let's make it our version that way you know let the producers and everybody else tell us what they want in doing it but you know i gotcha i did do my little motley you know vince impersonations and things like that but but of course the the best uh, vince impersonation is just holding the mic out to the crowd (laughs) (laughs) when i get (laughs) woo. Yeah, oh, in, in our shows too, in the Motley Ink shows, like a lot of the songs are more true to how they are on the record than any type of like live recording that you'll hear. Maybe some of the endings we kind of cop, you know, the live feel on the ending. Yeah, of the yeah. Songs. You got to have those big rock endings and some of the interpretations that they did, like on the Carnival of Sins tour and stuff like that. But for the most part, all the vocals he's singing are pretty much straight up how you're going to hear them, you know, how or how you grew up with them, knowing them off. Yeah, the well, I, I think that's what when, when fans go see tribute bands is like. That's what they expect. They yeah. expect you to sound like the fucking record, not right. like the live show. I mean, with us, I like to do the live version. Well, yeah, and 85, 90% of the fans there, especially if you're in a casino or something, the versions they're going to know are those album versions. They're yeah, not going to know that. So if you're playing some obscure thing off a live record and you're, it's not the most hardcore fans, no one's going to have a clue what they're what you're doing and just think that you're you know you're not very good or you know what I mean? Who I mean, who knows? You know? Yeah, and there's sometimes like with one of the high notes, like in Live Wire, I'll drag it out longer at a ah, or something, you know, extend it a little yeah, bit just but, to show off. Yeah, because you get. I mean, people, you know, it's. I might look like my eyes are closed, but I'm looking out of the corner of my eyes, seeing the reaction I get out of the people. You know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty fun. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's yeah. crazy watching the reaction when he finally like will do something off Too Fast for Love, and he'll do one of those real high screams on the album that people are just like, "Hell yes!" You know, the hands go up, and holy crap, this guy can sing. You know? Is your set list pretty close to uh, what Crew is doing as far as their set list? No, there's a, there, there's some stuff that we don't do that was on there. Um, we'll kind of keep some, maybe, maybe you'll see something from maybe the Carnival of Sins DVD and we'll do somewhat of that order, but the songs that we don't do that were on there, we'll swap in some other, other songs and stuff like that. But it's not, we just kind of found a, an order that works for us and we'll pop in a few of the obscure tunes and swap those out. But for the most part, it's roughly the same, same order. Songs kind of fit in a certain order that really works out well for, yeah. for live stuff. So we kind of stay true to that and try not to mess with it too much. And pretty much also depends on how much time we have if we're doing one set or two sets yeah. and we'll mix it up and yeah and uh, we did find which was really really interesting that uh helter skelter is a great encore song would have never have thought that <laughs> i, I we needed an extra song one night we had another five minutes to kill i was like let's do helter skelter 
So we sent sent Lance out there just to start that guitar part, and we're like, "You just play that part until we walk out and kick in the song with you." So we're, we'll leave him out there playing it for a good twenty seconds, and then we'll <laughs> kick into the song. Unless we want to mess with them, then we we'll just. But leave it goes off. The people love it. I would, I would have. I mean, me. I would have never expected that, but it's a really good encore tune, which is which is cool. Well, I can I can see that because it's a fucking Beatles song, and everybody knows it. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, Scotty says, uh, from all I've heard of the rainbow and all they showed in the movie, I was shocked to see a family eating there <laughs> <laughs> when Tom Zutov, Pete Davidson's character, meets up with Nikki to give them their songs back. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. don't really see a lot of families. No, in no. There. Yeah. But that, that was Jeez. one scene that was uh, that was like, I wonder if that's how it really happened, because Nikki has never said how that happened, how, how they actually got their publishing back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. But smart move on their part. Oh, absolutely. Also, another thing, too, about that table scene was that they made the table look like it's the front table that's right in front of the fireplace there. Yeah. Just kind of the way they shot that scene. But as far as I know, like, all the big bands had that table back in the far back Back corner, in the corner, yep. That bigger table yep, kind of yep. stuck away in the corner. The rock star right table. So, yeah, the rock star table. So, not table number one, Ace no. Von Johnson's table. Yeah, not Ace's table. Well, like the other <laughs> night when we when we went there uh, with Fred when he's giving me the little tour of the rainbow, the table we sat at was the Led Zeppelin table, you know, so... He's telling the stories about that, and you know his wife Amy and my wife Sunshine were. That and that's the table right in front of the fireplace, I, right? It's it seems like that's the table that they might have used for the filming because it's one of those half circle yeah. tables. So it was, I don't know, just it was cool yeah, to sit at the table. You know, he was talking about hey that table over there's you know Ronnie James Dio's table, and in the eighties you could walk around and there's nothing but rock stars in here, and and we had a little surprise visit by from. Uh, <laughs> the hedgehog yeah the hedgehog oh, was Mr. there ron mr ron jeremy was there and i look at him my wife looks at me and goes is, is that really him yeah that's yeah. that's ron jeremy yeah, he's always around man so yeah you can't heard, some, heard some of his stories and uh, yeah craig gas amazing comedian that you keep playing on here uh and his sam kennison oh and dude his kennison back is in the spot on. you know back in the day late 80s you'd rock in and kennison would be hanging out the rainbow it was like yeah, he yeah. was almost more people were more excited to see him almost than some of the bands you know pretty crazy we were like are you gonna see kennison you're gonna see kennison there he was dude and then sebastian bach will oh, be yeah. hanging out there every <laughs> once in a while it's like dude there was jack daniels and kill king uh anytime i have a chance to do that i have to throw it in gotta do it. um so what do you guys got coming up you guys got some motley ink shows coming up soon uh wednesday we're in fresno on wednesday at the oh. tower theater we'll be there yeah, the uh, April Feather Falls Casino on the twenty yeah. seventh. North of Sacramento will be a, uh, up there. We got Fantasy Springs Casino in Indio coming up on uh, I think it's May eleventh. All the dates, Motley Inc. on Facebook, I N C, or uh, Twitter. You can at Motley Inc. Though, I think those are the two main places that you. Is can it, find there's a right website now. too, though. There was a website, but I don't know if it's been updated for a while. Oh, ah, okay. I, I'm not sure what's up with the. That refers that. you back to our Facebook page. Yeah. So if you go, oh, on there, very well. You can always find, too, if you want to hear audio of us playing live, there's a, a full concert up on um, SoundCloud, and there should be a link on our Motley Inc. Facebook page to that concert, and if not, I'll repost it. Um, so you got to get that pinned right at the top. Yeah, so you got to keep it pinned it. at the top, yeah. and, and our and our concert schedule is pinned at the top, too, so oh, very hopefully well. Uh, we'll be coming to a city near you. New bookings pop up all the time. We play all over the U.S., so yeah, come, and come you, see us. You guys, if you have clubs, talk to your... Uh the club managers and stuff yeah. and see about getting us out there. Any local club that plays tri- tribute bands, talk to the promoters. Get us to come out and play those places. Fucking love we'll it. We'll buy the first round. Yeah, first round's on us. And uh, yeah, are you going out, Joe, are you going out with uh, Panther again soon? Yes, there's a bunch of Panther stuff coming up April, back over to Europe in April and July. And yeah, little two week runs with them guys, a lot of fun. And uh, you want to pimp Ultimate Ears? Yeah, anybody needs any in ear monitors, any musicians out there, come see me in the LA office for Ultimate Ears. Um, you can reach me at ultimateaudiojoe at gmail.com. All right, there you go. Um, I'll be back on Monday with a solo show, the very first edition of the Izzy Presley Show, um, talking about just talking topical stories and all that kind of stuff. And then Tuesday I'll have another guest. I don't know who that's going to be yet. I should probably figure that out because it's already Friday. <laughs> um, but anyway, so check all that stuff. I'll make sure you go. Oh, i got to hit, uh, hit my outro music here. And thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys for coming thanks, in. Yeah, for thanks. Thanks. thanks, everybody. Timmy Craven, Joe Lester. Watch yeah. the dirt. Motley thank, Yank. Thanks, Go everybody, Motley for crew. sending in your questions and uh, listening. And uh, hopefully we see you guys out there soon. Ah, uh, Jacoba says, Joe, I'll see you in May. And uh, in Destin, if they need anything while you're in town, let him know. 
Oh, yeah, down in Florida. I won't be there. Ah, very well. <laughs> the band will. I won't be the there. The band will. Actually, you may, will not. On that, on that show, we'll be doing a Motley Inc. show in uh, Indio. On oh, Monday. nice, nice. Yeah. Ah, John, your first at another effing podcast. Well, welcome to the welcome to the madness. Thank you, Scotty Strickland. All right, I'll be back on uh, Monday for a, uh, a special first ever Izzy Presley show. Solo, me just babbling about shit. Tuesday, I'll have another guest. Make sure you hit up all the social media at Real Izzy Presley. Click like, follow, all that kind of good stuff, and uh, follow the Another F and Fo- Another F and Podcast page on Facebook, and hit that Shop Now button. I have a shit ton of fucking uh, t-shirts and stuff, and uh, buy that stuff. Support the show, or just send me money. Easy Presley at Yahoo.com is your PayPal. All right, folks, this has been a lot of fun. Go watch the Motley movie. I'll see you in a, just a couple days. My name is Izzy Presley. It's another fucking podcast. And do not forget what I lack in talent. I do make up for in cock. <laughs>